These deals to offload the Queensland assets, when are they expected to close? Well, I mean, you've got to go through a regulatory process and uh, for the actual businesses that are being sold, and uh, we're estimating as a, as a working date the end of the financial year. And then for the business that's going to be closed, we're looking at uh, towards the end of the calendar year. Are there any other assets that you're looking to divest at this point? Uh, no, that's absolutely the underperforming assets. And when you look at the rest of the business, it's back to our core uh, activity, which is heavy haulage and uh, infrastructure, rail infrastructure management. We've talked at length about the recovery across uh, bulk commodities. Have you seen that being reflected in contract prices being picked up as well? So what we're uh, seeing definitely in coal, for example, uh, which is where we do most of our haulage, uh, mm -hmm. we're seeing customers um, actually committing to extension of contract to get uh, so higher volumes uh, in a particular period. Um, and that's a movement from some, say, six months ago where people were talking about doing it and now they're actually putting their money down. So I take that as a, a pretty strong sign. Yeah, so I think in the first half we spoke to you and you mentioned, you know, well, indicated some optimism, positive, positivity when it comes to coal prices. Is that still the view that you hold now? You, um, I'm definitely, say, six months ago I was probably slightly confident, I'm much more confident than that. I wouldn't want to be, you know, t taking that to the extreme, but we're definitely seeing uh, stronger growth than in volumes than we uh, would have expected, um, and it's quite broad based. Do you have a forecast when it comes to coal and iron ore? Um, I'm, I've been in the industry now long enough that I never forecast prices. <laughs> Andrew, are you seeing a recovery overall? What are you seeing in the, you know, the commodity space, looking at Western Australia in particular? Are they out of the woods in your view? Um, what I'm actually seeing is what you'd expect with uh, volumes, uh, prices that are holding up long enough and probably longer than people expected that people are gaining um, additional uh, confidence and that's actually uh, starting to sort of uh, transfer into uh, financial commitments for you know, extra uh, haulage contracts, for example. Okay, well, indeed. So, you know, has, you've got a net loss at the moment. How do you become profitable looking down the road or the rail? Well, you know, the... <laughs> walking down the rail. The net loss um, is really a result of uh, impairments of the underperforming intermodal business and uh, our, our bulk business, which is the non-coal uh, sort of bulk uh, commodities move, movement, and then for very specific um, accounting reasons. So um, when you look at the core parts of the business, our network business, um, our, which is the uh, below rail management, and then our above rail coal business, they're going uh, very strongly. And it, the secret with the uh, with success for the future is actually uh, getting back to those core businesses, and that's what has generated the uh, need, uh, desire to sell the uh, underperforming assets. Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. So you, the thing is, how are you going with all that, and you know what do you need to get off down, uh, you know, get rid of, if you will, down the line. So um, the plan with our, um, our intermodal business is we've agreed a transaction which uh, has an, uh, an estimated execution time because it's subject to regulatory approval for the, uh, for the rest of this financial year towards the end of it. And then for the businesses, business that we're going to close, um, which is the uh, intermodal business outside of the state of Queensland, uh, we're looking at the end of the uh, calendar year. What went wrong? What are your lessons learned? So the lessons learned from um, the intermodal business particularly is that um, it's actually quite different, even though there is a rail component to it, it's actually quite different to bulk, uh, the bulk haulage of a coal or an iron ore or, or grains and that sort of thing, in that there are, uh, it's, you need uh, very good logistic systems. And scale. Um, and you need scale. And we, we had attempted to struggle uh, to build scale going starting back 10 years and just never managed to actually do that. So um, there's a point in time where you go, uh, you know, we've tried long enough um, and, there's, and then in addition uh, road transport in Australia the policy settings in Australia uh, actually favour road transport um, those haven't changed for a very long period of time it's an extremely difficult thing to do so uh, expecting that to simply change magically uh, it was, it was just uh, not acceptable so that's why part of the reason the decisions were made. Um, the Carmichael mine are you in talks with Adani? So we continue to be interested in the um, development of the Galilee Basin um, and supporting any uh, customer that actually uh, wants to actually start um, uh, in the Galilee. And you know we've put forward um, uh, a number of proposals and our best proposal uh, this year to actually um, become in, uh, involved. And uh, at the moment, it's uh, part of a, 
uh, a NAIF, a Northern Australian Infrastructure, uh, infrastructure Fund sort of um, a process of consideration and we're just uh, seeing how we get through that process. When do you anticipate that you'll get a response? Well, the challenge with those sort of processes is that I'm not in control of them and there's no indication of when um, the process actually uh, is, is finished. So we continue to, to be part of it without actually having a sense of the end date.